So welcome back to uh, part two of lecture 32. In, in this part, we're still looking at self-adjoint operators. And we left off with this corollary that if you have a real symmetric matrix, then every eigenvalue of A is real. So this is actually a statement uh, you could have understood from math 1B03. Um, if you've taken math 2LA3, you may have seen the proof of it. If you didn't, that's fine. And there's no prerequisite to saying that you have to have taken math 2LA3 for this course. But how, how would you have proved this in math 2LA3? Because you wouldn't have used any of this language of uh, self-adjoint operators or anything like that, because that's kind of something special we do in this course. So here's a kind of the specialized proof given in math 2LA3. And what you'll see is that actually what you're doing is you're doing the same proof, but you you have to kind of um, look in a very specific uh, scenario, right? So the way that it works in math 2LA3 is you actually think of your matrix, your symmetric matrix as, as being in the complex numbers. And you use the standard inner dot product over the complex numbers, right? So this is actually the standard inner product over CN, where you take the first coordinate times the conjugate of the first coordinate of V and so on. So you take the sum of this. And you have to note, okay, that according to this definition, the, the dot product of U times V, the dot product of UV is the same as taking the transpose of U and multiplying it by the, uh, vector v okay so that's kind of um that, that's kind of one way to think about what we're doing right here okay and so this is how you would have set it up in math 2 la3 and then you say well if a is an eigenvalue of our symmetric matrix okay then what we have is that the the norm of the vector v squared okay so the proof looks exactly the same but now we have to make use the fact that we're using our special uh, inner product right we're specializing to the inner product of the Euclidean inner products we have V dotted with V right and we can pull this in this is the same thing as lambda V dotted with V and this are now we're going to use this fact right here about express everything in terms of vectors so this is the same thing as the uh, transpose of this vector times the conjugate of the vector v. And now we can use the fact that this is an eigenvalue of my matrix, right? So this is the same thing as a times v transpose times the conjugate uh, uh, the matrix uh, vector v. And when you bring the trans, then you have to use properties of transpose from um, math 1b03 so this is v transpose a transpose times the conjugate of v okay so this is uh, transpose properties transpose properties uh, and then what we want to use is that this is a is symmetric right so we can now say that this is symmetric so this is v transpose a times v conjugate right so this is using the uh, the symmetric property right here to go from here to here and hopefully I left myself enough room I'll actually move over here to check, make sure I have enough room so um, we know that because it's it's symmetric, right? That you can take the complex conjugate of every entry of A, and you don't change the value of A because A is real. Okay, so here I'll put this right here. A is real, so you can replace the matrix A with its conju complex conjugate of each entry. You're not changing anything, and now what you have here is that this is the same thing as V dotted with the vector a times v and this is equal to v dotted with lambda v because uh, lambda is an i v is an eigenvector of a and then by properties of the dot product this is the same thing as the complex conjugate of v dotted with itself Right, which is the complex, uh, the conjugate of lambda times the norm of v squared. Okay, and now proof continues as above.
Okay. So what's interesting is this is the proof that you may have seen in math 2LA3. It uses, um, you wouldn't have seen it in math 1BO3 is because you have to work with the inner product from the complex numbers, which isn't something normally defined in 1BO3. And the proof that you see here is actually a, a much more special case of what's happening here. And what you're seeing here is kind of like the special case it takes a little bit more work to make it work compared to just the general case. Okay, so I just wanted to kind of show you the difference between the two proofs. In, in the last part here of the, the, the finishing up this part on the um, uh, self-adjoint operators, I wanted to make kind of some, some useful facts that will be kind of used, not necessarily today, but maybe in future lectures. So the first thing is that if we have an inner product space and if we take an operator, and it happens to be the case that whenever you take a vector v and you plug it into your t and you get something that's orthogonal for all v and v, then that can only happen if your operator is zero. Okay, so what this is saying is the only operator that takes any vector and sends it to something orthogonal to the thing it starts with is the zero vector. Okay, now this is something special about the complex numbers. Every once in a while, we bump up against a result that needs the complex numbers. And it's false if we allow the real numbers, right? And here's an example to see why. If we take the real numbers, then consider the operator that takes a pair of vectors, right? And maps it to the vector minus y x okay now this has the property that when i take the inner product of the vector of uh, it evaluated at t with the original vector right i get negative y comma x comma y uh, x y I get zero, right? So what happens in this case, okay, oh, um, but t is not equal to zero. So I have like, I have this hypothesis, but I don't get this conclusion. And the reason is, is I don't satisfy the over the c part. And so what happens in this case is, in this case, t maps every vector v to an, uh, to an orthogonal, orthogonal element. Okay, and then what the fact is saying is this, that this is not possible over c. Not possible over the complex numbers. Okay, so this is kind of something interesting about the real numbers. Okay, so what does this have to do with the uh, adjoint operator? Well, we won't prove this, but there's another way of classifying when an operator is self-adjoint over the complex numbers. So an operator is self-adjoint if and only if, whenever you do look at the inner product, uh, uh, taking a vector v, applying t, looking at its inner product, you get a real number for all vectors v. Okay, so another way to think about what a self-adjoint operator is, is just saying that when you look at all such elements, you always end up with a real number. So if at one point this number gave you a complex number, your operator couldn't have been self-adjoint. Okay, so it's a completely different way of looking at what it is. Okay. And it turns out that uh, if, you have a, if you have an operator that is self-adjoint, and if it has the property that it takes any vector to a vector that's uh, orthogonal to it for all v, then the vector has to be the zero operator. Okay, so if the vector is self-adjoint. Now, so what's happening here is saying that, okay, this part of the theorem, we can change the hypothesis that we don't need the condition over the complex numbers. We can change it just to be, if it's a self-adjoint and it satisfies this, then we can also get this conclusion. So what we have, you know, from the above example, we saw that this operator satisfies the, 
you know, sending each vector to each vector is zero for all v, but it's not the zero operator. So because of that, so t can't be self-adjoint because the theorem says whenever you have something that's self-adjoint, it has to be able to, uh, and it has this property, then it can only be the zero operator, okay? And this is actually easy to see in this case. So indeed, if we look at the matrix MT in this case, we have that it takes X to, um, uh, it takes X to, um, make sure, minus one, and it takes uh, Y to, um, oh, sorry, I got this wrong, zero, one, and minus one, zero. Okay, and this matrix here is not symmetric. So the matrix, uh, the operator can't be self-adjoint. Okay, so that's it for I wanted to say about self-adjoint operators. When we come back, we're gonna talk about our other operators, which are the normal operators.